10 things that you can do when you don't know what to do. Live from Los Angeles, California, this is the Lisa Murray Show, and with your host, Lisa Murray. The day I felt like I really started living. I don't have enough money to start this business. I'm so tired. I hate it. I'm working all the time. I'm not inspired when I'm worried about money. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. I'm so sick of all these positive people talking about dreams, dreams, dreams. What about money? Like, how am I supposed to get the money? What it's really about, it's about you pursuing what makes you come alive. It's about continually connecting with that energy and just keep doing that. Keep going towards that. That's what it's about. You need to give up. There's, just, there's too many obstacles. I can't take this shit Ships anymore. are safe in the harbor, but that's not what ships are built for. It feels really good to be my own boss. I have dreams, damn it! Welcome to episode number 13. So this week, it's going to be very practical and to the point. I want to give you 10 things you can do to get yourself out of a funk right now. If you're in a funk, do one of these 10 things, or if you're in a really bad funk, do all 10. (laughs) But do these things, and I promise you, you will at least feel a little bit better. These are things that I do. And if there's something that I didn't list here that you know works for you, I'd love to hear from you. So send me an email. I have dreams, damn it, at gmail.com. Or you can send me a message from the I have dreams, damn it, dot com website. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So let's get into this top 10 list. Well, it's not the top 10. Maybe it is. It's just my 10. So here you go. Here's 10 things that I do when I don't know what to do when I'm just stuck. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think of like what what to do when you don't know what to do, I think you take action. And nothing life-changing or anything like that, because if you're not sure of it and it's something major, like I'm going to go get married, like not that kind of action, but like start laundry or make that call, call that person you've been putting off. Because sometimes I think the procrastination, the frozenness, it's sort of fear that has figured out how to camouflage itself into our psyche. And so we don't see it as fear. We're like, no, I'm not afraid. I just don't want to call that person. I don't feel like doing laundry right now. I don't even care about laundry. (laughs) And I think it's just, it's really, there's something else going on or you're just stuck in a little corner somewhere. So number one, take action, do something, especially something that you've been putting off, something that you knew you wanted to do, um, it's been on your list and you keep pushing it off and pushing it off. Just start taking action. Don't be perfect about it. Don't expect it to be like the answer of all things. And don't, don't even be thorough about it. Like maybe you don't even have to finish it, but just start it. You need to start acting. Cause I think what happens with me is I, when I'm frozen like that, it's cause I'm too much in my head and action changes that. And that brings me to number two. The second one is movement. Get out, exercise, dance, do something, move your body. Because, you know, there's a few things going on. I know most of us already know all this stuff with oxygen and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just to get out of your head and to just come back into your body and realize you're here, you're alive, you're moving, you know, and set your alarm on your phone for like two minutes and just dance or move for two minutes straight. Um, it will change how you feel. Just get up from your desk or get up from the bed or get out of the car or whatever it is and just move around and be silly and don't think about what you look like or how you're moving or anything. Just move. And I promise you, you're going to feel a lot better. I mean, even if you're still stuck afterwards, you're still going to feel better and then stuck. (laughs) And then also I would say for number three, I would say if you can move and be outside, I know if it's like three in the morning, obviously you probably shouldn't do that. But being outside just in the fresh air, in nature, in life, around people, it doesn't have to be nature, but just around other people, which is another form of nature. Um, Just get out, get out of your head, get somewhere else, get some fresh air. And it's a bonus point if it's during the day, because then that's the vitamin D and just everything else. And just get out. Even if you're like, no, I know for a fact that will not make me feel better. Okay, then just humor me and just go outside for like five minutes. 
sometimes when I'm like at my absolute worst, especially post-trauma, where everything seems to be so much harder in my life and things that I used to do like, pff, like nothing. I used to multitask and do a thousand things. Now it's like I do one thing and I'm like, sometimes I'm just like overwhelmed by one thing. But that's the effect of all the stuff that I went through. And I know that and I'm trying to be kind to myself, but sometimes it's hard. But anyways, one of the things I would do when I was extremely down and out and I didn't really feel like moving around. I didn't feel like being seen by anybody. I didn't want to look at anybody. I just didn't want any interaction. I would go outside and when it was sunny out and I would sort of sit in the sun and I would set my timer and I would just sit there for like one minute or two minutes and I would just soak in the sun and that's it. Just to change my energy up a little bit and to make sure I was just getting something different. So that's number three. Another thing that I really enjoy, and this is sort of a 3A is just get outside. 3B is like, you know, if you can do more than great, you know, look at a sunset or a sunrise. I set up, I like to set up my iPhone on a tripod or just lean it against something so that it shows the sky. And I put it on time-lapse video and I just, I film and I go back inside and I do other things. I mean, you can't do this in the summer when it's hot. You have to be careful. You have to watch your phone because you can destroy your phone. But um, just if it's not too hot, put your phone out and just, and it's not gray. There's actual clouds that are puffy and white and cute. Then I like to take some um, time lapse of the sky just and watch it back. And it just makes me happy. It just makes me feel like, wow. Because sometimes I, I part of my funk is feeling like nothing is happening nothing is changing. And for some reason, it does something deep inside of me. When I see the clouds move, it makes me feel something. So find whatever that is for you and do that. But I mean, like, you know, sit, if you live by the ocean or by a body of water, go by the water and sit by the water. If you're a water person, um, I like watching sunsets more than sunrises. I don't really get much from a sunrise. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I love a sunset, but the sunrise is too early for me. I feel like I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to ruin it for you. So you, if you like sunrises, you go watch a sunrise. But um, just basically observe nature. Um, you can even watch a fire uh, in the fireplace or a candle. Like observe nature in movement. I think there's something to that. So that's three B. For number four, um, I sometimes will write everything out. Everything that's bothering me everything that I can't stand, everything, 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 everything. Like if I just, depends on what I'm going through. Like if there's a lot of things bothering me, I'll just write it all out. But basically just do a brain dump on your computer or handwritten. And if you can't even do that, if you're that stuck and you can't even picture writing, which happens to me, I do a voice memo on my iPhone. I just record a voice and see if you have a tape recorder, you can do that. But just record myself saying every single thing. Because, you know, sometimes you want to vent to a friend or a family member, but maybe they're busy or they're sick of you venting to them. <laughs> and they're like, oh, really? You're annoyed by that again? We know. We've talked about it. But you know what? Your voice memo app on your phone never gets sick of you. You can repeat yourself a thousand times. Your voice memo app will still be there for you, man. Your voice memo app loves you. Maybe it doesn't love you, but it'll be there for you. So just do a brain dump in there. It's helpful to listen to it back or to read it back, but you could also just delete it. You know, it's up to you. It's your world, like Bob Ross would say. It's your world. If you want a pretty little tree in the front, you put one in the front. And sometimes if I'm not in the mood to write like in paragraph form for brain dump, I'll write like, you know, three, five things that I can't stand that are bothering me that I'm freaked out about or that make me sad or mad or whatever, I'll write that down in one column. And then the column next to it, I'll try to match it with things that are really great or things that I'm really grateful for. And that's kind of a version of a brain dump also. It doesn't have to be like a story. It can literally just be like telephone bill, neighbor, dog's toenail, you know, or something. And then in the gratitude list, I'll write um, health, friends, podcast, you know, something like that. Number five, I, I, I go into like a dream part of myself. Like I just say, what would I really want? Like if, if there were no obstacles whatsoever, what would be absolutely perfect? What would I want for my life right now? And then I'll, 
act as if it is real to actually plan it. I pretend like I just got this huge amount of money and by tomorrow morning I have to go to the bank and I have to sign some documents. So what what am I going to do next? Like who am I calling first? And I'm I sort of pretend that um I have to write my to-do list before I go to bed so that I can be prepared for when I go to the bank and all that other stuff. So okay, I want to set up a trust fund for my nephews and I want to um you know, I don't know what, what I I have so many things I want to do, but I'm not even sharing that right now. But anyways, you know what I mean? Like just right. And it's, it's like, I get lost in that and it's kind of fun. It sometimes hurts because I'm like, Oh, am I ever going to be able to do even a fraction of this? But it feels good anyways. And it kind of kicks me into a whole nother part of myself where there's no like immediate pressure. It gets me out of, you know, cause I don't know, there's something just about the dream. You know, somebody was saying the other day, in person around me, you know, why, you know, they were annoyed at another person who was saying a bunch of like ideas for their business. And this person is more of a practical person. So they were saying, you know, too many ideas, too many things, too many projects. And I thought, for me, no matter what, I would rather be in the part of myself that dreams, even though I know she's very practical and all of that, and that probably works for her. But for me, even if the dreams never come true, even if I die without having realized anything, which that's not possible because I've already realized a couple of dreams, but let's say moving forward, I'm not able to realize some of the things I'm working towards. I don't care. I, I want to live a life of pursuing them. That's the point. So when I dream a little bit, when I kick into the part of me that's really dreaming and I get out of that practical part of myself, it's sort of like writing, you know, fantasy, if, like fiction. I don't care if it's real or not real. Some stuff I re- I mean, everything that I say is my dream is something I really want to manifest. But at the end of the day, and since I've faced death and I'm looking at it, you know, closely, and I've thought about my own mortality to a great extent, I would rather dream and be in the midst of a dream and articulate a dream and just swim inside of the energy of a dream than never have dreamed at all. Because life will pull you down. Life will pull you down. The practicality of being in the physical world, there's so much to do in life that's not really that inspiring. And so life will take care of pulling us down. We don't have to pull ourselves down. I never understood that. Like, you know, it's almost like, well, yeah, I just don't want you to get hurt or something. It's like, I probably will get hurt. That's what life is. Life hurts us, you know, but I am going to dream, you know, and I, for me, so that's number five, if you jive with that. If not, if you're like, eh, I don't really want to do that. Okay, and skip number five. But this is for somebody who maybe this might work for. I seriously go, okay, what if I have like the winning lottery ticket? Or what if I sell a screenplay or whatever it is? And I go, okay, so now I have the money in my account what do I do first thing tomorrow morning? Like, who am I calling? Okay, I want to get my hair done by that one girl that I've always wanted to have my hair done with. Um, maybe I'll get LASIK surgery on my eyes. I want to get clothes. Oh, I'm going to buy a ticket for me and my mom to go to Geneva and see where I was born and she can show me the whole area around there. Okay, I want to buy my friends. Um, I want to invest in their winery. I want to invest in Jerry and David's winery. I want to, you know what I mean? Like there's things that I, that would, that it get me excited and make me kind of alive again. So sometimes it helps me when I'm in a funk. One thing that I do, and I even recommend this for men, I don't know why bathtubs were, are pre- predominantly for women. I don't understand that at all. Like I think everybody should soak in a tub every now and then. Cause I mean, how much can a shower actually clean you? I don't know. Side note, but anyways, Men and women, I think, could benefit from like an Epsom salt bath with some aromatherapy and some candles or a bath bomb or whatever it is you want to do. But I like to have Epsom salt on hand because it just kind of helps with your joints and your muscles. Um, My skin feels soft. So I usually like to put Epsom salt in a bathtub and some essential oils like lavender or frankincense or something, whatever you like. That does something for me. And sometimes I'll put on like, you know, 70s, 70s AM radio music, some just to hear some weird stuff, you know, I haven't heard in a long time. Or 80s, um, not 80s dance music, because that's 
everywhere now, but like 80s alternative. And I'll look up playlists like that and I'll put that on. Or sometimes I'll just listen to like the symphony or operatic music or something. And sometimes I don't listen to anything. And I just sit in the tub and that resets me. It really helps me. And I recommend that. So that's number six. Number seven is put on your favorite music and blast it with headphones or just speakers. Put on your favorite music and blast it and let go of everything. Don't think about anything. Don't think about any of your problems. Don't try to solve anything. Don't try to write anything down. Just be in the energy for you and for its own sake. Music is such a huge um, tool for us to access our emotions, our motivation, our memories, um, peace, feelings of peace and tranquility, safety. Like music is so important and it can totally change your mood. So if you put in, you know, just something really like that makes you so happy, even if it actually makes you cry, if it's like the most beautiful love song or something like that, put it on to get back in touch with your feelings. Cause when you're stuck, you're not even, you know, you're just sort of in limbo and this will just move something. And by moving something, sometimes other things move too. Do you love going to farm stands and buying fresh from the farm produce? Do you have to pull over on road trips to pet a cow? No? Okay, maybe that last part's just me. Regardless, regardless, we can all agree on our love for all things agriculture. And how about art? Don't you love watching films about artists, painters, singers, dancers, musicians? Coming in September is the Ag and Art Film Festival in Vacaville, California. And they are open for entries. So if you have a film, a narrative, a documentary, a short or a feature, if you're a student or if you're a pro, this is your chance to show your film to the world. And by the world, I mean Vacaville, California. But still, it's going to be awesome. Visit agandartfilmfestival.com for more information, and you can submit your film exclusively on filmfreeway.com. Okay, we only have three more things on the list. Number eight. These are all things I actually do, okay? Number eight, write a list of everything that you're grateful for. And if you can't write it down, just say it in your mind or record it on your voice memo. Yep, voice memo. Um, I, I focus on gratitude a lot. I'm really big on gratitude. And I remember when I first heard about gratitude, I didn't know that it was the thing that I was doing because the way people talked about it sounded different than what I felt like it was to me inside, whatever. Um, but gratitude just puts things in perspective, you know, and it shifts us from focusing on what's missing or what sucks or what's wrong or what's whatever to all the things that are good and right. And that we need that. We need to train our minds. It's not just a one-time you know, looking at it going, huh, yeah, I guess I have a lot of things to be grateful for. No, it's about doing it every day. I try to do it every single day throughout the day at different times. And at night before I go to bed, I definitely try to do that. I just try to say, thank you so much for everything today. I don't even know who I'm thanking, but just thank you. Thank you that I got through the day. If sometimes it's just a matter of thank you, I got through the day. Sometimes it's, Thank you for this awesome thing that happened. Thank you for the new friend. Thank you. I'm so grateful I have a new friend and I'm so happy about it. I'm so happy that Pickles hung out with me today and drove around with me when I did my errands, which is a real story. And I did really appreciate him being with me. Pickles is my dog. And it's funny because his ears, well, it's not funny. This part isn't funny. I don't mean it that way. His ears were cut off. Some of you listening to this have met Pickles and some haven't, but his ears were cut off probably by some dumbass um, thinking it made him look cool. When he was like three months old, he was found running around San Diego and a rescue group rescued him. He also had a tattoo on his body. Um, so it was probably, you know, who knows what it's, he's like a skinny dog. So he wouldn't even be like, cause he's really more like a whip it kind of vibe. Like he does not, when he was little, he kind of looked like a little pit bull dog, but he wasn't that. Yeah. So um, whenever I go out with pickles, people are always like, oh, what happened to his ears? So I have to launch into the story so they don't think I did it. But yeah, pickles is awesome. He's my number one dog, even though I love Sparky. 
Pickles is even on top of that. Pickles is my man. So no, Pickles is the guy. So he hung out with me today a little bit. And that was really cool. I'm very grateful. I'm grateful that he's healthy. He can walk. He can get in the car. He enjoys it. You have to really kind of run it through because otherwise you wait until, you know, those things, you can't have those things anymore. Um, and then you go, why? But you should train yourself to be so aware of every time something really great happens so that you fill yourself up with that stuff. So then when something bad happens, you can keep it in perspective too. Because I think if you're only focusing on, oh, I'll, I'll be happy when a certain thing happens, you're setting yourself up for a lot of unhappiness. So write down a list of things that you're grateful for and do that often. Do it every day if you can. Just be aware of the things that you're grateful for. Number nine <laughs> is laugh. I love laughing. I love and it. It's hard for me to really laugh, like laugh hard. I have, I, I, I don't know. I have a lot of funny friends, but I have a, probably a weird sense of humor. So for me to laugh, like I write LOL all the time, but I mean like, oh, that's funny. Or, oh yeah, totally. That's what I mean. <laughs> for me to actually laugh, especially when I'm laughing where I can't breathe and I'm crying. Usually I'm on that level when I'm really tired and really exhausted and just some silly joke goes into me and I'm like, oh my God, that's hilarious. And it's not, but it feels like it's hilarious. But it's such a release, isn't it? Like to laugh that hard to where you're crying and you can't breathe. I love laughing like that. It's just such a huge release of the tension and stress. And so sometimes I'll even try to look up comedians, you know, and now with the phone, cell phones and you know, it's amazing because you can just open up your YouTube app or whatever, Instagram, anything, and just type in comedy and you can find something. And I found a guy, I think I told you guys about this a couple episodes ago, but called um, Joe List, a comedian named Joe List. And he's so funny. Oh my God. I was dying laughing. Or maybe I, did I tell you guys? I don't remember. Anyways, check out Joe List. He's got a little bit of a dirty sense of humor. So this isn't for like younger people. But um, not dirty, but like sometimes he says some things. I'm like, oh, okay, I wouldn't be able to send that to like a younger person. <laughs> but I just think he's hilarious. It makes me laugh. But there's a lot of very funny people. So just find your people or even like bloopers, you know. I, I don't know what it is and I'm ashamed to say it, but people falling down is funny to me. I, it's not funny when they fall, though. In real life, I feel horrible and like knowing that they're going to be sore or like, you know, have to go to the hospital. I mean, no, I don't like all that. But it's the way that people try. I don't know. There's just something funny about it, especially, I don't know, when I see that. Or news, like when people are nervously trying to hold on to something and then the thing falls apart. That to me is funny. I don't know. I guess I'm laughing at my own self, really. But like news bloopers, that's another one for me. So what makes you laugh? I'd love to hear from you. What makes you laugh? Like, what is funny and who is funny? Who do you just die laughing whenever you listen to stand up or whatever? Or like comedies, you know, funny movies and stuff like that. Tell me what your favorite funny movie is. You can send it to me. You can actually, I'll put it, I'll put a post on Instagram for people to <laughs> let me know, like post funny things because we all need to um, keep our funny toolbox of funny things full because when you're in a funk, you're, you're looking for something to knock you out of it. Honestly, and I've mentioned this before, but when I'm in a funk, and if I've done any of those other things that I've mentioned previously and I'm still in a funk, not that I wait until that and then I do it, but I'm just saying doing something for someone else always knocks me out of my funk because you realize, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I could say a bunch of corny things and then it may or may not work. All I'm saying is do something for someone else and see your mood rise, whether it's a person or an animal or, you know, if you see, I don't know, even like if you're walking somewhere and you see some trash on the ground and you pick it up and you put it in the trash can, like just little things for someone other than yourself, like you're doing something for the world, for an animal or for a person, a human in need, your friend, your mom, your sister, your anybody, like do something for someone else. And I promise you, you will feel a little bit better, a little bit better, or you may even feel a lot better. Okay, so to recap 
the 10 things that you can do to get yourself out of a funk. One, take action. Two, move your body. Three, A, go outside. Three, B, watch nature in motion, like a sunset, the ocean, a fire, the moon and stars, something. Number four, brain dump. Number five, dream big and pretend it's real. Number six, take a bath. Number seven, listen to music. Number eight, gratitude. Focus on your gratitude. Number nine, laugh. Ten, do something for someone else. Do you have something that you do that gets you out of your funk and would you like to share it? You can send it to IHaveDreamsDammit at gmail.com. You can send me a voice memo and I may put it in a future show or you can just send me an email and I may read it in a future show. And I love to hear from you guys because it helps me. It opens my mind up and go, yeah, that's right. I really, I like that too. So love to hear from you guys. So I don't have very many Instagram followers for the podcast and it's my fault because I'm really not doing very much with it. So I'm going to try to be a little bit better (laughs) at uh, keeping up more posts on there. But if you would like to follow the podcast on Instagram, it's I have dreams, damn it, shocker. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram, I don't even have that many followers, but I'm Sky Girl Picks, S-K-Y-G-I-R-L-P-I-C-S. And that's Instagram. Um, I'll have the links in the show notes, as you know, show notes, show notes, show notes. And um, that's on IHaveDreamsDammit.com. I have a blog on there and I'm trying to post at least once a month. So if you're like a reader, you like to read things, that is there and there's a link to it on the homepage. I think I, I tried to put everything that is in the website for the podcast on the homepage as like a linkable thing so that if you're just scrolling all the way down, you'll find what you're looking for. So you don't have to actually go through pages. But then if you want the full thing, you can go to the page. You know what I mean? So hopefully you, you find that helpful. You can also sign up for the email list. You can join the I Still Have Dreams Damn It Facebook group. And you can, uh, yeah, I mean, all the show notes are there. I have all the episodes have their own page and that kind of stuff. So head on over to IHaveDreamsDammit.com if you want more of that. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. And thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.